Mark, that was that was lovely. That was really really um, touching. Um, and thanks, Kong, as well. That was fantastic. Um, I'm going to get my toast over um, straight away because then I'll I'll just forget. Um, so if I can ask you just to charge your glasses, please. Um, and I just want to thank um, and toast everyone who's been involved in putting today together, and particularly um, Kong and Kath. Um, and everyone else who's been involved in, in making um, in making the day a success. So can you just yes. 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 Um, it's traditional, but I would have said it anyway, um, just, to, just to say, man, you look absolutely spectacular today. And I was stood right next to Mark and had the privilege of Jamie giving us a bit of a tip off there and saying, look over your shoulders, and, and there you were, and you look just, just fantastic, and you made Mark, I'm sure, a very, very happy man indeed. Diggy, you look all right. <laughs> <laughs> You're rocking the salt and pepper, pepper look these days, but yeah, you're, you're, you're doing okay. <laughs> Context. <laughs> Diggers always ba he bangs on about everything, to be honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> always bangs on about context. So I just thought, I just need to contextualise uh, my friendship with, with Digger over the, the course of the last uh, probably 30 years now. You know, we met um, when we were 12, 13 years old. We went to church together um, in Newcastle. And I've known him ever since, and he's been a, a loyal... Um, a loyal, loyal friend of mine, more of that in a bit. Um, so really me and Digger spent a lot of time growing up together. In 1982, 1983, that meant a lot of things. Um, it meant video nasties a lot of the time. You know, the, the days of Rawhead Rex and films like this. It, it was the days of, of Atari ST, you know, playing Pitfall and Sound Fox Strip Poker. And, uh, and, uh, and that was like, you, Phil! <laughs> I remember that being you, Digger. It was the days of a pilgrimage every two weeks to St James's Park to, to, to stand at the, to, to meet at the Yellow M, at the Leaser's End of St James's Park. And to get yourself in there, sometimes you used to peer, sometimes you used to sneak in and stand at the same spot every other Saturday. And, and Digger would insist on this. I, you know, I don't know. Don't know what was going on, but it wasn't the best spot in the world. It'd be right behind the goal. You wouldn't be able to see much. But it always insists on staying in the same spot week in, week out. Um, Digger's love for Newcastle United has obviously embellished itself on, on, on today. We're all being dressed in black and white and um, grey the old away strip for Newcastle United. And um, Jamie, of course, it wasn't lost on us that your robes were pretty much black and white stripes as well. Um, Newcastle United aren't playing today, it's Saturday and normally we'd play and I do have a feeling that the fact that we got knocked out of the FA Cup four weeks ago is something to do with the fact um, that Digger didn't want his wedding coincided with the two of them. <laughs> <laughs> Digger's a passionate man. I think everyone who knows Mark will agree that he's a passionate, passionate man. Mandy's, trust me, a passionate, passionate man. He's passionate about football management games when we were growing up. <laughs> and as a result of that, he knacked his television in his room when he wasn't doing so well at football management games. <laughs> he cut his foot through the television. <laughs> he was passionate about board games. I remember playing Risk with Dick and he knacked the game of Risk. <laughs> he was passionate about board games. Ten pin ball and he was passionate about ten pin ball. I remember him knacking his foot on the side of the ten pin ball in, in, uh, in the middle of Newcastle actually, I remember that well. He was passionate about his best mate and I, his best mate, and I'll tell you what, he knacked his best mate. <laughs> taking, him, taking him out in a challenge just because he was was, is and always will be a slightly better footballer. <laughs> Um, growing up with Digger meant um, Peggy and Ivor as well, and I'm pleased you touched on that, Mark. But I'm just going to take um, a couple of minutes to say, um, and probably on behalf of Roy and Raymond as well, what that meant for me. Um, now, you, you've kind of stolen me thund thunder, and, and it's interesting because um, exactly what you were going to say was verbatim what I was going to say I didn't know. Um, a, a, about them both. And I was going to describe Ivor, Ivor as, a, a, as a gentleman in the, in, the, in the classic sense of the word, a gentler more kind soul, um, I, don't think, I don't think I've ever met, he's fantastic. 
Um, really, really lovely guy. To me, you know, the, the one abiding image and memory for me is marmalade on toast. <laughs> on a Sunday morning, you'd stay over at Diggers and play whatever on the Atari ST. Um, and in the morning, you'd wake you up with, with marmalade and toast, and there it was. And, and you know, it's a real shame um, that, that, that I can't be here. Um, Peggy was a different kettle of fish to Ivory, it has to be said. Um, again, you know, I've just talked about Diggers' passion there, and, and Peggy, Peggy, Peggy was a, a very passionate lady as well. And again, I don't know why food's sticking out, but again, Sunday lunch in Biker with Mark. Um, would invariably mean Peggy's Sunday lunch, and I mean the plates were big, but the gravy was overflowing. The amount of food that used to be on the plates um, from Peggy's um, food. Um, she also had a, a, a strange, um, a strange thing with, which seemed to happen every so often, which was taking Mark's favourite, most expensive, and best white shirts. And stick them in the washing machine, and they come out pink. <laughs> I don't know how many times this happened. But, uh, honestly, the, the arguments that used to come from that was, was absolutely ridiculous. And I, I just suspect that Peggy, um, you know, thought what we always suspected that Mark's just a teensy weensy little bit guy. <laughs> Um, and, and again, you kind of you, you kind of stole me thunder, Mark. Um, not about that bit. Um, I, I honestly think, Mandy, if Peggy and I were here today, they would welcome you, welcome you to the family without even thinking about that. I can't hear a higher compliment to you than to say that. Right, um, I've got a couple of little helpers, um, oh Talia and Lauren, who are just going to step in at this point and circulate um, just some visual props, really, let's, let's call them. Because what I want to do is just to bring us bang up the date. James, I think I've got about 12 minutes left, 13 minutes, something like that. You've got five. Um, I just want to bring us up to date. I haven't got anything to say about these photographs. The, the kind of... Uh, Kind of speak for themselves. <laughs> what is that? Now I know that everyone's on Facebook these days. I know you've probably seen a lot of these photographs um, already. I just think it's it's worthwhile just remembering what, what an absolute knacker it can be. <laughs> so what have we got here? We've got um got pictures of Digger as Mark Skywalker. <laughs> We've got him coming up the closet. That was on the stag do, actually. <laughs> uh, he went into the car seat on the coach. Um, and so we locked him in. <laughs> and eventually he came out and we're all ready with our photographs. Um, who can forget Digger and Diney? Um, apparently, Mandy, you're not a huge fan of Diney. Um, Diney will be going to Melbourne. <laughs> you might as well just accept that now, to be honest with you. So I'm hoping these photographs just bring us up to date a little bit. So what I want to touch on now, keeping in context, is what's Digger like these days? I've talked about Corona with Digger and um, how that always ended up um, um, in, in, a, in a bit of a state. Um, this is what a weekend with Digger feels like now. Every couple of months or so, Digger will come up and we'll stay with Rachel and I um, up in our small village near Bingley. <coughs> um, the first thing you notice about Digger is he's bad. It's <laughs> this is if he actually makes it to the house. He has been known to have the odd glass of wine on the way up, fall asleep, miss the stop, <laughs> wake up, and ring us and say, no, I'm not at Bingley anymore, I'm somewhere down, can you come and get us, please? Yes, Digger, we'll come and get you. But the first thing you notice is his bag, it's, it's that big, it's usually wide open, it's slung over his back like this, and he comes in and invariably hoys it down in the middle of the floor, in our living room, and that's pretty much where it stays um, for the rest of the weekend. Mandy the mess. <laughs> the, 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 the mess. We're talking oh, yes. ocean going trawlers with seagulls <laughs> after them. And, and the mess that's created. So I, 
don't know how this is going to work. I was talking with Kath before about you know how, how, how that dynamic is going to work, but honestly, I kid you not the mess. <laughs> Something else which invariably happens when, uh, when Mark's staying with us um, are the rants. <laughs> so, if you've been if, if you've been beholden to one of Digger's rants, right? <laughs> He's a runner. <laughs> whether it's email, whether it's Facebook, right? Facebook, right? And text message, right? Okay. Last time I looked, you're limited to 140 characters. I'm going to read out one of these tap, one of these, uh, one of these texts. <laughs> It's on the subject of one of Newcastle's uh, greatest strikers, Shola Aniomi. <laughs> and I'm going to do it in my strongest Geordie accent, just for the extra room. This is a text. Look, Shola, just be quiet. I'm not interested in your analysis of our league position or that you want to fight for your place. You are useless. Get out! Leave! <laughs> How you've made a decent living out of this club for ten years is beyond me. I'm not bothered that you think that we need to be focused and keep our heads level. Be quiet, surely. This is a text. <laughs> Same text. This is what it writes. You can scroll a bit like that. <laughs> I'm sick of you speaking out to the press. Just be silent. Do something more than once every ten games. Please, maybe run a bit. Maybe put some effort in. Maybe a half a, a, half a decent pass, please. But quit, you moronic, boring, <laughs> and insignificant ramblings to the local media. <laughs> I could go on, but I won't. <laughs> a few other vignettes from um, Diggers staying with us for a weekend. Uh, the God Channel will stay on in the room for 24 hours a day. The glossolalia that goes with it. I'm not going to go into that, don't worry about it. He'll go on and on and on about his Johnson. <laughs> Boris Johnson, all the time. Boris Johnson this and Boris Johnson that. And I don't know why, but you seem to have a thing about Boris Johnson. <laughs> the other thing that invariably happens when Mark comes to stay with us is we have a FIFA tournament. Uh, the emotion <laughs> that goes it. So this is my PlayStation. I'm playing FIFA. Um, we'll play the best of five games. Five games. Um, and, and honestly, it's like the whole weekend leads up to this awful output. I mean, Rachel's, Rachel has to leave the house. Honestly, it's, it's, it spills out of the front room into the kitchen. It's spilled out into the street before. The neighbours even The neighbours. On the odd occasion, the odd occasion when Diggers won. The odd, I think it's happened twice. He'll take the opportunity to celebrate. Uh, there's a number of celebrations. I remember the time when, when, um, when he won, and I went to bed in a bit of a huff. Um, I got up the next morning, and I kid you not, the whole of the house was littered with post-it notes. Each one of the post-it notes were in my, I mean, they were all over the place. They're in the front room, they're on the door. I went in the fridge. I wonder they were in the fridge. It was all over the place. But the one what, the one celebration in particular I remember was in the old house before I met Rachel when I lived by myself and played. He'd won, he'd spawned it to be honest with you. And I went upstairs in the huff and I just wanted to let things calm down. I must have been upstairs um, for 10 or 15 minutes. Um, and I just thought, right, you'll have calmed down, you'll have, you know, have, have forgotten about it. And I just came downstairs 10 or 15 minutes later and opened the front door and Digger's there. <laughs> <laughs> Now, he didn't hear me come down those stairs. And such is the dedication of the man. He was there for 15 minutes. Just waiting, patiently, quietly. 
Dig is a passionate, passionate <laughs> <laughs> But I just want to, um, I know I've only got about 12 or so minutes left. Um, I, just, I just want to sum up Digger um, in a few words. Digger is a, is a paradox, you know, he really, really is an enigma. Um, he's working class, but he's an intellectual. He's a Tory, but he's a socialist, or is he? No, I'm not a socialist. Yeah. <laughs> he used to be. He was. He's outspoken, but he's a deep, deep thinker at the same time. Highly, highly intelligent man, but a complete knacker. <laughs> at the same time, he's enigmatic, he really, really is. He's one heck of a warrior, he's one heck of a pes pessimist. And a teensy, teensy little bit gear. <laughs> but the digger I know is also capable of immense loyalty. He's got a tattoo on his arm, and I think I'm right in saying that that tattoo says one word, which is truth. Faith. Faith, right, okay, I thought it was truth. But faith. He's the most honest. Um, person that, that I've ever known in my life, and I've known Digger for 30 years, and he really, really is. He's probably the most generous person with his time. If you've got a problem, if no one else can help, <laughs> <laughs> then call Mr. T. Because you really, really could do a lot worse. <laughs> um, so, look, guys, um, I just want to wish you all the best. I really, really do. Digger, you're my best mate. Um, but I'm losing it, but I'm losing it in, in the best, best possible circumstances. Uh, Mandy, you've got a guy here who's absolutely unique. He's one in a million. And it's, my, it's been my pleasure. I mean, today's been fantastic. I don't know how you felt about today, but I just think it's been, it's been great. Yeah. It's been really inclusive. And I think everyone's had a really, really good time. And, and I, think, I think, you know, uh, I'm speaking on behalf of Digger, uh, of Mark, of course, but I think it's, it's Mark's spirit, which has really sort of carried through and permeated. And the sort of day um, that we've had. Um, now, Mark's moving to Melbourne. Um, <laughs> and in, in, in summary, <laughs> I don't know why I've got that. It's Melbourne. Yeah, it's Melbourne. Melbourne. Uh, I used to call it Melbourne until some of us were right. Well, that's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I did just want to close by saying um, that Mark's moving to Melbourne. <laughs> <laughs> And in my head, that means that there'll be a little part of Melbourne which will be um, forever Newcastle. <laughs> <laughs> and it'll be forever Mark as well. So there you go, that's, that's me done. I think I'm just about out of time. Um, I just want to, if everyone again can charge the glasses, please. And I just want to close the toast um, to Mark. Uh, to Mark.